Hi everyone, The Gay Guide here, and today we're going to talk about my do's and don'ts for chatting in hookup and dating apps. Uh, I get a lot of questions about chatting boys up in online apps, uh, so I figured I'd basically pull together my best tips based on my experience using them so far. Uh, so let's get started! Uh, my first do is figure out what you're into, and then look for the best app to get what you want. Uh, if you're looking for a quick one-night stand, no strings attached, there are plenty of apps for that like Grinder or Scruff or Hornet. Um, anything in that category will get you an easy hookup. Um, if you're looking for maybe more than a hookup, but a hookup is still okay, uh, Tinder is a great one for that. Uh, and apps like Tinder. I think Bumble is another one very similar to, to Tinder. Um, but if you're looking for more than a hookup, if you're looking for dating or maybe in a, a long-term relationship, uh, then there's apps like OkCupid or Match.com uh, that are much more geared toward the, uh, you know, people looking for relationships. There's also a ton of specialized apps like Field uh, if you want to get involved in a threesome or Ashley Madison if you're looking for married dudes. So just figure out what you're looking for and I'm sure there's an app for that. So once you figure out which apps you're going to use, uh, do set up an honest profile. You know, being yourself and being upfront about what you're looking for is really the fastest way to get, that's going to get you what you want. Um, but don't be boring or basic. You know, just because you're being honest doesn't mean you have to be boring about it. You can be cute or funny or sexy, uh, you know, and still tell people what you're looking for. You just got to find different ways to say it. Do pick your photos carefully. Uh, make sure they're recent, they're clear, and they are a good represent representation of you uh, doing things that you like to do with friends and family. Uh, as much as I hate it, photos are basically the first thing that people will see about you in these apps, and people will make snap decisions based on that first photo. So make sure it's a good one, make sure you're smiling, make sure that you look like yourself. Don't overuse photoshopping or face tuning to try and make yourself look better. Uh, it just starts getting dishonest uh, when you're misrepresenting yourself in your photos. Okay, so once you have your profile set up, uh, do have reasonable expectations about who you're going to connect with in these apps. And don't take it personally if someone doesn't swipe right back or respond to your message that you sent them. You know, it's, it's the nature of these apps that people can choose to not respond or not select you for any reason that they want. They could just be in a bad mood and don't want to respond and ignore you. And they have every right to. That's just sort of the nature of these apps. So don't take it personally. It happens to everyone. Just move on. There's another profile right behind that one. So once you do connect with someone and start to have a conversation, do continue to be honest. Uh, you can choose your words as carefully as you want, but keep in mind that the truth will always come out. Uh, but being truthful doesn't necessarily have to be boring. Again, you can be cute and funny and witty and sexy as you want. Just don't lie about yourself and, and try and make yourself seem more attractive to that person because they will eventually find out the truth. Don't fall in love before you meet in real life. And this one hits a little close to home for me. So you're having this great conversation with this guy and it's going really well and he looks really cute in his photos. And you're quick and you're witty and you're getting each other's jokes and you're saying the same thing at the same time. You know, you did it like three times in a row and it's just going really awesome. But the problem is, no matter how good these text exchange conversations are, those interactions are missing a critical component to an actual relationship and that's chemistry. You know, chemistry just doesn't make it through the internet. It has to be felt in person when you meet someone face to face. And I don't know what the scientific explanation is for it, I just know I've experienced this a time and time again. Someone who I've had really good conversations with online, I meet in person, and for one reason or another, he just doesn't do it for me, he does not connect um, in, in that same way that you want them to. Or someone, I'll meet someone in real life, and hit it off great with them and, and you know really get engaged with this person and this may be someone that I never would have talked to online. And that's really the magic of chemistry. You have to be there, it has to be in person, um, it, it can't be faked and, and you know it's also out of our control. That's the other thing you need to keep in mind is chemistry is out of our control and you know it's either there or it isn't and you can't force it if it's not there. And it's really shitty because one person can think it's there and the other person cannot and you know that's not gonna work. So don't 
take it personally if someone is not feeling you the same way that you're feeling them. Again, it's it's out of their control just as much as it was at, as it's out of your control. Uh, you know, they can't help it. Don't take it personally. Um, it's just again part of the process of meeting people and dating. Is sometimes it just doesn't work out even when you think it really should. Um, so just sort of accept it and and try and move on. Okay, so assuming you haven't fallen in love, but you have set up a meeting with this person, uh, do prepare to be flaked on a lot. And this is one of my big problems with, with online chatting because it's, it's so easy. Anyone can do it. All you need to do is download an app and set up a profile and you can start chatting away uh, with anyone that, that you, you know, may connect with. Uh, it takes no commitment, it takes no courage to, to start these conversations, but once those conversations start moving into meetup territory, now suddenly you're committing to be in a certain place at a certain time, and you actually have to hold a conversation in real life with this person that you've only been exchanging text messages until now, and you know they're going to be looking at your actual live face, not you know the best photos that you've put forth. And that gets scary for people, and people chicken out, and they will cancel last minute and not want to you know work up the courage to go on this date. And it's happened to me so many times in this it's always a, a good excuse um and they promise that we'll reschedule and then you just never hear from them again you know it's happened time and time again uh, probably 60 to 80 percent of the people that i've tried to set up meetings with in these apps have either flaked or tried to reschedule and i just never heard from them again so don't take it personally if it happens to you it happens to everyone and again, it's part of this process. It's the part of meeting people online where it's so easy to chat, uh, but it, it takes some courage to actually meet up uh, with a person in real life. Uh, so don't take it personally. Um, I haven't really found any great ways to avoid it. Uh, you know, my best thought there is maybe try a phone call or a video chat before you meet up. Uh, that may ease some of that that pressure of being able to hold, hold a conversation or, or see you face to face. You know, I, I don't know if that's really going to work, uh, but it's probably worth a try. But if you somehow managed to beat the odds and successfully chatted up a person to the point where you're setting up a date that looks like it won't be canceled, uh, do still take precautions before you meet someone in real life. Uh, always agree to meet in a public, well-lit place. Um, always make sure that you're telling a friend exactly who you're meeting and where you're going to meet them. Um, you can take other precautions, like you can tell your hookup that you have plans later. Uh, so you have an out if you need it, and he knows that someone is expecting to see you later that night. Um, or you can even go the extreme where they, there's uh, sort of location service apps like Life360, where it basically it, it can activate a, an emergency button which will send your location to you know, people that you've selected from your contacts, that sort of thing. And don't ever feel obligated to do anything that you're not comfortable doing. I don't care what was agreed to beforehand, how much effort this person put in, how far they traveled, how much money they spent, and even if you're in the middle of something, if suddenly you're not comfortable moving forward, you have every right to change your mind at any point and say stop. So please do keep that in mind. If it feels weird, speak up, opt out, and, and, and get out of that situation. Uh, do also be honest about your STI status and insist that your partner is as well. And do also always bring your own condoms. Never rely on your hookup for condoms. And regardless of what they told you about their STI status, always use those condoms. And do remember, as careful as you can be, even if you followed all this advice, there will still be horror stories. There'll be some weird guy on this weird date and this weird shit happens. So just try and take it as one of the punches and, and think of it as a funny story you're going to tell your friends later. All right, so I want to finish up just with a few words about catfishing. So catfishing is when someone lies in their online profile uh, to make themselves more attractive. Uh, this can be anything from simply exaggerating stuff in your profile and maybe photoshopping your photos all the way to the extreme of everything being fake in your profile and you have multiple social media accounts set up to back up your dating profiles. Uh, it, it's lying and it's deceitful and it seems like a terrible way to try and meet someone to start a relationship, but it still happens. And I understand why, it's because it works. You know, the, the way these apps are designed, the photos are front and center. And details are sort of follow-up to those photos. So people are making snap decisions based on these, these pictures. So these apps work really well for good-looking people. 
And sometimes they don't work so well if you're not traditionally good looking or maybe you just don't photograph well. So it sucks that when people aren't getting the responses they want, they change their profile to someone who's better looking and they start getting responses. It, it just serve an instant gratification for this sort of lying and, and cheating method to, to connect with people. And to make matters worse, you know, people looking at these photos, they can make a snap decision for whatever reason they want to. You know, I've totally been guilty of looking at a profile, seeing three pretty cute photos and one not so cute photo and then swiping left. You know what? Because there's another profile right behind that one and I can keep going. And it's terrible and it, it sucks and I feel like an asshole for doing it, but it's the way these apps are designed. And it's why catfishing works because it, it gets the responses when you use a better looking photo. But if you aren't successful in these apps, you know, lying is not the answer. Don't catfish. Maybe try a different app. Maybe try and take some better photos. Maybe go outside and meet people in real life. I mean, I am much more likely to talk to someone regardless of what they look like if I meet them in a bar. You know, plenty of people that I wouldn't talk to in apps I've, I've met in bars and, and become great friends with. And on the other side of things, there are a few precautions you can take to avoid being catfished yourself. Um, always ask for links to their social media accounts. You know, like I said, those can be faked if this guy's a, a real good catfisher, uh, but they're usually red flags, like the number of friends that they have or, you know, lack of comments on their photos, that sort of thing. Um, you can ask them what they're doing and then ask them to take a photo of them doing it. You know, that's a good way to confirm that their pictures are who they say they are and that they're recent because, that, you know, he's taking a picture, a live picture for you right there. Um, you can try doing a Google reverse image search on their profile pictures and make sure you don't find any other profiles set up with those same photos. Uh, and, you know, when all else fails, if you're still not sure before you're meeting up with someone, you can ask for a video chat beforehand. And, and you can be upfront about it. You can say, look, there's a lot of catfishers out there and I need to protect myself. Or you can say, you sound too good to be true. I just want to make sure that you're real. Something, something sweet like that is, is a good way to do it. Um, but it's, you know, it's again, it's a way to make sure that the person is who they say they are and, and you're, they're not going to be you know, misrepresented when you meet them in real life. And finally, even if you've taken all the precautions to avoid it, but he still shows up and is clearly not represented by his profile or his photos, turn him away immediately. No sympathy dates, no sympathy drinks, or even a few minutes to explain himself because that sympathy is what catfishers count on. They hope that you'll be a good enough person not to turn them away immediately. And they need to learn that it won't work. And the best way to teach them that lesson is to turn them away immediately, not even to give them time to explain. Um, hopefully that will give them the lesson that is not worth their time to try and deceive you to get some time in, in the same room as you. So to finish up, apps can work great uh, if you are lucky enough to have an, a good, honest profile, but even then they still have plenty of problems to deal with. Uh, there's plenty of rampant racism going on and body shaming and all sorts of other basically superficial problems of being able to be practically anonymous in these apps. Uh, and, and even if everything else goes well, there's still a lot of that flaking going on and it's still difficult to actually meet up with someone in real life. Um, I, I much prefer meeting people in real life in, in person. Uh, you know, being able to introduce yourself to new people is a really important life skill that you should always be practicing and always trying to be getting better, better at. So go outside, do things that you like to do, find other people that also like to do them, and, and that's a great way to also meet people. Um, I actually did a video on five ways to meet other gays. I'll put a link for you up here. Uh, check that out uh, if you've got some time. But these apps are a great window to the millions of guys that are just a few thumbtaps away. So I hope this overview was helpful to try and get the best out of them. Uh, don't forget to like the video if you did think it was helpful and subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with my upcoming topics. Uh, down in the comments below, let me know if you have any other advice for using apps. Uh, or if you don't have advice, tell me your worst horror story of a date you went on uh, with someone you met through an app. Uh, I'd love to, to hear about that kind of stuff. And you can leave those comments in the comment section down below, or you can email me at thegayguide at gmail.com. And in the meantime, get out there and be who you needed growing up.